What's going down, good people? It's your boy, Ray G. Happy Saturday to you. And if you're listening on In The Lab on Monday, happy Monday. Hope you start your week out great, but I appreciate everybody that taps in Saturday to take a look at some dynasty trades that have happened over the fantasy football landscape provided by the good people of Destination Debbie. That's right, patrons, patreon.com forward slash all gas. Y'all know this show is powered and sponsored by our partners right there in the corner, Sleeper wire make sure you go to draftnightout.com get your tickets they're doing a live draft at the fantasy football expo if you want to break into the industry if you're going to be around the ohio area or if not get your tickets fly out there you know hey hey, stuff is opening up go have a good time with some fantasy football nuts and enthusiasts as well but we got a lot to get to in this show so uh we're gonna drop the intro and get right into it All right, all right, all right. Let's get it popping. And uh, I have looked at none of these so far. I have not looked at any of these trades. So this is raw, authentic emotion and analysis on air for these trades. We'll look at it. Super flex, single quarterback. We'll try to do all that good shit to, uh, to make it applicable for everybody, right? So first deal, my man McNutted, my man McNutted. He got Rashad Bateman and Trey Lance, and he sent away Raheem Mostert and A.J. Brown. So, you know, top dynasty wide receiver in A.J. Brown gets shipped away for two highly coveted and highly touted rookies from the 2021 class, Bateman and Lance. Uh, I love A.J. Brown. Love A.J. Brown. If this is a super flex league, and honestly, even if it's single quarterback, I think that the ability of Trey Lance to score you points on the ground, you know, have a floor of what, 450, 500 rushing yards a season. I'm talking, I'm being conservative here. If he's getting you 500 rushing yards a season, another 3,500 to 4,000 passing yards, you get Rashad Bateman. He should serve as the number one wide receiver for young, talented Lamar Jackson. I'm really digging this side of the deal for him, uh, no matter how you slice it. And if it's super flex, You know, I'm the idiot who traded Trey Lance away a a couple of weeks ago. I posted that on the last trade show. What a shit deal uh, for me. I I really regret that one. But if this is super flex and I'm getting Trey Lance and Rashad Bateman and really all you're giving it up is A.J. Brown, let's not, let me, let me backtrack that. Not all you're giving up. You're giving up something good. A.J. Brown is legit, um, but Rashad Bateman could be, you know, would anybody be shocked if in two years we're talking about him as a top 12 dynasty wide receiver. So I think this was good value. I think this was a good trade. I like it from either single quarterback or super flex formats for McNutted. I don't really give a shit about Raheem Mostert. Uh, This deal was AJ Brown. And I like the the pairing of Rashad Bateman and Trey Lance for AJ Brown. Now this this next trade, I just titled it a lot because there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. We've got to decipher the Da Vinci code. That is this deal. So One side of the coin, Barry the Don. Barry the Don received Amari Cooper, Derrick Henry, Rain Dakota Prescott, Brian Hill, and Jeremy McNichols for Jalen Rager, Zach Wilson, Rondell Moore, what he perceives to be a late 2023 first-round pick, an early 2022 first, and a mid-2024 first-round pick. So we always start the analysis was where's the best player in the deal. And to me, the three best players in this deal are Marty Cooper, Derrick Henry, and Dak Prescott. So I'm already like aboard buried it on in this side of the deal. Uh, you know what Zach Wilson can become. Could he be Dak? I don't think so, but I think he can be really good. Uh, Derrick Henry is a tank. We know he's one of the best running backs in the league. He's just going to keep going and going. And Amari Cooper, for whatever reason, still extremely young. I believe he's, what, 26 years old. Still one of the best wide receivers in the league, tethered to uh, an elite quarterback in Dak Prescott. I mean, that side of the deal for me, uh, the the first rounders, uh, I love 2023. There are some good, talented, incoming freshmen in the 2024 class. And I'm going to dive into that more uh, starting next week on the Destination Debbie podcast, really diving into the 2024 class and what these incoming freshmen look like, because there's some dynamic quarterbacks with players like Jackson Dart and J.J. McCartney and 
and uh, Brock Vandergriff, uh, Kyle McCord, Caleb Williams. Class is dope. Jai Hall at wide receiver, Travion Henderson at running back. But that's three years away from any of those guys even being draft eligible. And so much shit can happen between now and 2024 at the earliest. I don't really care about that pick. Uh, 2022, if it's going to be early, yeah, there's some, some, some good players. In 2023, y'all know how I feel about that. But ultimately, listen, Dak, Henry, Cooper, single quarterback, super flex, Tight end premium, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I, I'd almost, if you just told me I'm getting Dak and Derrick Henry for Rager, Wilson, Rondell Moore in the picks, I think that'd be something I'd probably explore. So you add an Amari Cooper on top of that. Um, I, I think that's just money. And of course, Brian Hill and Jeremy McNichols are irrelevant. Uh, I, I like the side for Barry the Don. Good deal, my friend. Good deal. All right, we got another deal. I just titled it a lot more, <laughs> a lot more. So this one, Code Red 27, got Daryl Henderson, Terry McLaurin, T. Higgins, and Cam Akers. Woo, that's a haul right there. I mean, that's these type of deals are just like roster flipping moves, like roster changing moves right here. So one more time, Cam Akers in his backup, T. Higgins and Terry McLaurin for Cortland Sutton, Gus Edwards, Hollywood Brown, J.K. Dobbins, LaVisca Chenault, 2022 second, and a 2022 third. I'm just off the rip, like without even diving deep, Akers, McLaurin, Higgins, Henderson by a country freaking mile. Like straight up, this is... Uh, <laughs> This is one of those deals where I categorize them, and, and I, I don't want to diminish Cortland Sutton's value. I love me some Gus Edwards. Still have hopes for Hollywood to a certain degree. Love Dobbins, love Chenault. But this, to me, is like a noise deal. Like, you just you, you add a bunch of shit in the trade to make it appear as though your league mate or trade partner is getting, like, tremendous value back when essentially the three best players in this deal were received by Code Red 27. I want Akers over the pairing of Dobbins. And I mean, I get what he did. He said, I'm going to send you Dobbins and Dobbins' backup, right? Or running mate, the 1B to was 1A. Like, I'm going to send you that whole backfield for your backfield. I'm also going to give you Hollywood Brown and Cortland Sutton and Chenault's got the hot. This is... Prime sell LaVisca Chenault hype, sell the hype on J.K. Dobbins receiving all this workload, and you got McLaurin, Higgins, Akers, and Henderson. Well, where's the applause? Let's 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 air horn you. Yeah, let's give you the applause. Good deal, Code Red Twenty Seven. Good freaking deal. I love it. Love this side of the trade for you. Um, you know, it doesn't. Doesn't really matter if it's super flex because we're just looking at skill positions. Uh, I think this was an incredible deal. Incredible value, incredible deal. And let's take a look at the man, the man, the man, Darren Waller. He is in everybody's, I mean, I'm seeing Darren Waller, Dynasty tight end one. So let's see what popped off here. So uh, we've got Darren Waller, T. Higgins in a 2023 first round pick being acquired for Chris Godwin, Kareem Hunt, and the 2022 first. Yeah, all right. So Waller Higgins, 2023 first rounder for 2022 first, Hunt and Chris Godwin. So tight end premium. It, it, it truly, in my opinion, it depends on the premium, right? 1.5 of reception for a tight end, it, it doesn't, it only truly impacts like the top target hog guys, the Wallers, the Kelseys, the Kittles. It, it doesn't move me as much as 1.75 or two points per reception uh, tight end premium. So right here, the best player in this deal right now, if we're just talking PPR, standard PPR, I still think it's Darren Waller. Um, there's, I know Brian Edwards Henry Rook should take a step forward, but Darren Waller's still going to be the primary target in Las Vegas. And then Chris Godwin, probably T. Higgins, probably 2023 first, then Kareem Hunt, then the 2022 pick. I, and if, if it is tight end premium, then Waller even gets more of a boost because I already have him as the best player 
in PPR formats and you're getting T Higgins and you're getting a 2023 first rounder like this is this is another I mean <laughs> give me Waller Higgins in the 23 first man I, I I just love that Kareem Hunt his role is secure in Cleveland as the 1B to Nick Chubb's 1A but that's what he is he's the 1B to Nick Chubb's 1A, and if something happened to Chubb, we know Kareem Hart can step up and command, uh, you know, primary ball carrier work or workload. We know what he can produce. Godwin, I'm a little like, I, I'm just, I'm interested to see how this Tampa Bay offense is going to operate with a fully healthy, fully engaged, fully committed Antonio Brown. I, I think Antonio Brown is in for a monster season with Tom Brady. They bring back all their starters. It's another year being acclimated with him. Another year removed from the the Buffalo Bills trade fiasco to the Raiders to the Steelers shit fallout with Juju. Like he's he's we've heard nothing from Antonio Brown. And what I've learned that the less you hear from A. B. probably the better. Uh, so I'm still you know still kind of like iffy on what Godwin's role and his ceiling could be. It's definitely capped with A.B. being there, and Tom Brady is going to feed him. He loves him, and uh, yeah, Waller, Higgins, 2023 first over the other side, and I don't think the other side got a bad deal at all, but I would just prefer uh, Waller, Higgins, and the 2023 first. All right, let's take another look at uh, J.K. Dobbins. So Steph Curry, Stan, received Dobbins, shipped off the 201, the 204 in 2021, and Mark Andrews, uh, you know, so Andrews, uh, if it's super flex, maybe that's Bateman, potentially Trey Sermon, Michael Carter, maybe, maybe Mac Jones is there at 2-1, 2-4, you know, you're still looking at some of the same players, Rondell, Sermon, Terrace Marshall, and Mark Andrews uh, for J.K. Dobbins, um, I like Dobbins. I like Dobbins. You're you're hoping that a sermon or a quarter could become what J.K. Dobbins has already shown an ability to do at the NFL level as a rookie over 800 rushing yards, sharing a backfield with Gus Edwards, sharing a backfield with you know Lamar Jackson. We saw him do that on limited opportunity, and you know, hey, Mark Ingram is gone. This this should bode well for uh, Dobbins here in 2021. If this is tight end premium. You know, again, we just talked about the premium. All premium, all TEP leagues are not created equal, right? Is it 1.5, 1.75, two points? Uh, either way, uh, if it's two points, I think I like Andrews and the 201, 204. If it's 1.5, you know, it's three players for one. Uh, I still like Dobbins, but I don't hate you know, potentially landing Trey Sermon and a wide receiver, Rashad Bateman and Michael Carter, Rondell Moore and a Trey Sermon plus Mark Andrews. I, I don't I don't hate that side of the deal. So I think this was a good one for both sides. And uh, I understand why somebody would want to acquire J.K. Dobbins right now because he's talented, he's good. And we'll take a look at another 2020 running back right here, uh, DeAndre Swift. So we, we see these two kind of lumped together a lot, Swift and Dobbins, uh, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, Antonio Gibson. So Baskin received DeAndre Swift, Elijah Mitchell, and Kenneth Gainwell for a 2022 first, a 2022 third, and a Mari Cooper. And we talked about Coop, talked about Coop a couple of picks ago. I, I think he's vastly underrated and is being knocked because CD Lamb is being propelled and elevated when uh, the reality is Amari Cooper's the one. Amari Cooper's the one in Dallas. Like, I, I get it from a dynasty perspective. We want the younger player. Uh, and I'm not even going to say that CeeDee Lamb is more talented than Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper was one of the most impressive-looking wide receiver prospects that we've seen come through the circuit in years, right? And I don't want to use this as hyperbole because we just throw this shit around so much. But since a Julio Jones, I mean, he was an elite-level prospect who's still a young wide receiver. So I'm not going to sit here and say that CeeDee Lamb is more talented than Amari Cooper. No, I don't believe that to be the case. He's younger and he's equally talented in his own right and he should deserve all the praise that he gets. 
But Cooper's a walking 1,100 yards of uh, a season receiver, right? 1,100 plus tethered to an all pro type quarterback in Dak Prescott. Giving up Cooper in the 2022 pick, uh, the first rounder, that's, 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 that's not cheap to come up off of in order to get swift. I like Elijah Mitchell. I've had some bold takes out there that Elijah Mitchell would be the leading backfield person in San Francisco and outscore Trey Sermon. And right now, per the beat reporters outside of an injury, that does not sound like it's going to come to fruition. So, uh, you know, Gainwell, I liked him, right? I liked him as a prospect. But is he going to beat out Boston Scott? Is he going to be that third down player for Philadelphia? And right now, I don't know. So, uh, uh, get your guy, man. Get Swift. Get D Swift. I, I think he's, you know, he's being knocked for silly, stupid reasons as well. Uh, he's he's a he's a fantastic young running back, and we saw him command a ton of targets as a rookie in a weird timeshare. Uh, if you want, if you're hurting that running back, and that's what it took to get, I think that's a lot. I mean, I think that's. That's I don't want to say a lot, but that's probably a fair. It's probably what it's going to take to get him. Oh man, I think I like Amari in the 2022 first, but I understand acquiring the young, talented back. But man, I think I like Cooper in the first man on this one. I do, um, even if it's a mid first rounder in 2022, mid to late. Cooper's a dog, man. Cooper Cooper's a dog. And again, this is not I don't I don't dislike Swift, but I think I would prefer if if this were sent to me, I would probably accept Amari in the picks and figure something out at running back later with those picks and potentially Amari Cooper. But I, I like Swift, man. I, I I did a video on Swift. I think he's being uh, devalued just because of coach speak and narrative and Jamal Williams and all this other shit. But I like Swift, man. I like Swift. I like both sides. But I think I would take Cooper in the picks. All right, let's just continue down the 2020 running back path and talk a little Cam Akers. So this one, we saw um, Jerry Judy and Cam Akers being acquired for Will Fuller, Joe Mixon, and a 2022 first. Um... Best player in the deal, Akers. Second best player, it should be Mixon. But Jerry Judy, Will Fuller. Um, give me Akers and Judy on this one. I want Akers and Judy. I think this was a good deal. Uh, 2022 pick, you know, mid to late. Still some talent there. I like it. Um, but I want Akers over Mixon, and I want Judy over Will Fuller. That's what it comes down to. And the 2022 pick doesn't sway me enough off of wanting that receiver over Fuller and that running back over Mixon to make that side of the deal better for me. Uh, I would not have traded Cam Akers and Jerry Judy for Fuller Mixon in a 2022 first. I, I think I want Akers and Judy again by a country freaking mile in this side of the deal. So let's talk a little Darren Waller again. Another deal. Whoo. Wow. So Logan too real back to back trades. Uh, uh, is this the same? Is this the same league? I don't know. I don't know. It looks different, right? The colors different. Colors off. Uh, but he received Rashad Bateman, a 2022 first and a 2023 first rounder for the Darren Waller. Now, TEP tight end premium, one point five. Smash Bateman side. 175. Smash Bateman side. 2.0 a reception. If 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 you're the team that's acquiring Darren Waller, and I, I just have to assume this is tight end premium because if it's just standard PPR, I would not be doing this. I would not advise uh, trading two first round picks and a young talented wide receiver uh, for a tight end. If it's just standard PPR, as great as Darren Waller is, he's not going to do what he did last season every year for the next three, four years. It's not happening. If it's 2.0 and you're going for the gold, I, I understand, but damn, that's a lot to give up to get Darren Waller. I mean, that's, that is that is a hefty penny to pay 
But if we're just talking, let's meet down the middle and say 1.5 tight end premium. I want Rashad Bateman. I want the 2022 first, and I want the 2023 first, although Darren Waller is the best player in the deal. I do think those first-round picks, plus the combination of Rashad Bateman, makes this side uh, the winner in, in this deal. So this was a good job of, of maximizing the... Uh, the the aura and the value and the momentum around Darren Waller. This is this is selling high. Like, and I even think if they were able to to uh, to include 2024 picks, uh, Logan probably could have gotten a 2024 second or fourth. Uh, at at this point, when you're already committed to giving up this for Darren Waller, those two picks and Bateman, shit, I'd ask for a 2024 for for a first rounder or a second rounder just. I mean, he's probably going to do it at, at this point. He needed Waller. Lorax wanted Waller. He got Waller, and I think he paid a hefty price to get him. Uh, love this side of the deal uh, for Logan. I'm going to air horn him. Right? All right. K1, Kyler Murray. My boy, Kyle Rob 4 Now, there was some debate in the YouTube channel about this name. Is it Kyler OB4? Or Kyle Rob for I think it's Kyle Rob for I don't know my man. All right, so he ended up getting Cortland Sutton and Kyler Murray and traded away Mike Evans, Daniel Jones, Devontae Smith, and a 23 third round pick, 2023 third rounder. His 2023 third rounder. Um, nobody else's. So he's um, if this is uh, a super flex, uh, Kyler Murray, Cortland Sutton. I mean, duh, easy, easy. And I, you, one thing that I don't see a lot of in single quarterback leagues are deals for quarterbacks. And in single quarterback leagues, you want quarterbacks that can give you points on the ground with their legs, right? Because that's an that's an added bonus, right? The, the statue quarterbacks that don't throw for a ton of yards and a ton of touchdowns, shit, you can stream those guys off waivers, right? I'll just... I'll roll with Baker one week. I'll roll with Daniel Jones the next week. I'll throw in Ryan Tannehill a week after. Who cares, right? But in Superflex, I mean, Kyler Murray for me, I, I would trade Daniel Jones, Devontae Smith, and Mike Evans just to get Kyler Murray. Like, if if that's what it would take, like, I'd, I'd do that. And now I get Cortland Sutton back, who... While I love me some Jerry Judy, Stephon Diggs 2.0, I still am a big fan of Cortland Sutton coming off of that injury. He was injured early. He should be full go. He should be fine. He's big. He's fast. He's physical. He's got an outstanding catch radius. He's got a shit quarterback, but at some point that will resolve itself, whether uh, by acquisition or subtraction. Kyler Murray and Cortland Sutton, single quarterback, super flex, doesn't matter. Like, good deal, man. Anytime, like, there are certain players that you just get them. Patrick Mahomes, if you have a chance to get Mahomes, you just get them. I'm just going to say it. Kyle Pitts, if you got an opportunity to get him, you just freaking get him. Kyler Murray, if you can get him and you're giving up Jones, Smith, a third round or two years from now, and Mike Evans, you do that, and I probably would have accepted that big-ass package for Kyler alone, but to get Cortland Sutton on top of that, great job, man. Great freaking job. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Trey Lance. Damn, Ky Kyler OB4 is back on the on the block again. And what does he do this time? He trades away Cam Akers and Taysom Hill. You get Trey Lance and Michael Carter. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, best player in the deal is Akers today. And a year from now and six months from now, when Trey Lance takes over as a starting quarterback and does what a lot of us think he can do, it very well could be Trey Lance. It should be Trey Lance in Superflex. That should be the, the more valuable asset. Michael Carter, I know there's a lot of buzz, and I, and I listen to my man Matt Kelly, the podfather, talk about the New York Jets hype media bubble, that anything that happens in New York is going to be elevated and propelled, and all these guys are freaking outstanding, and they're going to go from... 2 and 14 to, to 11 and whatever. Um, and because we've heard nothing about Jamar Chase in Cincinnati, we've heard nothing about some of these other guys. But Michael Carter, Zach Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Chris Herndon, they're all, all pros, uh, according to beat reporters in New York. I, I think he's he was a fourth round running back, man. 
He's a fourth round pick. He's talented, but I don't. He's not Cam Akers, right? He's not. I mean, at at best case, he's what a top twenty five dynasty running back, and I think towards the the back part of that. Um, I'd much rather Cam Akers, but the upgrade to 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 move off of Taysom Hill to get Trey Lance right now, I, I think that's why you make this deal. This one hurts because I I would not have wanted to give up Cam Akers, and I'm pretty sure Kyle Kyle OB Kyle Rob Ford didn't want to give up Akers as well. But if this is super flex and you're getting Trey Lance, that's that's yeah. I mean, damn, you know, shit. I wish I would have gotten. Cam Akers for Trey Lance when I traded him. I got Baker Mayfield and Marlon Mack, and I did get CeeDee Lamb, but still, you get the point. Oh, man. Super flex. You got to go Lance, single quarterback. I'm going to go Taysom Hill and Cam Akers because Taysom Hill is going to run for a bunch of touchdowns and yards and throw the ball, so you get the dual threat uh, scoring potential with Taysom Hill. So, single quarterback, Akers, Taysom Hill, super flex, Trey Lance, Michael Carter. All right. Last deal that we are going to take a look at today is one that features one Jonathan Taylor. So we saw Kenny Galladay, JT, in the 2022 third round pick being acquired for Terry McLaurin, J.K. Dobbins, and a 2022 second. Best player in the deal, Taylor. Second best player, McLaurin. And then Galladay, Dobbins, is there just this... This one for me is just who do you prefer more? Do you are you a Galladay believer? Because if you are, then that's the side of the deal you you rock with. If you love you some Kenny Galladay, the number one receiver in New York, they paid him a ton of money. We saw what what he was able to do in Detroit, and then you get a third rounder in 2022. But if you're not a Galladay truther, and you believe McLaurin is the alpha that I believe he is, if you believe Dobbins can be the running back that I think he can become, then that's a good package, man. I mean, Taylor over Dobbins for me, and McLaurin over Galladay. So it's literally, to me, this one is just, it's even, man. Uh, I know a lot of people be like, oh, Jonathan Taylor by a mile, but I love McLaurin. Love Dobbins, and then you get a second. Uh, I'll leave this one to the YouTube comments. I think this is a lot tighter than it appears. Um, what would I do? Like, real talk. What would I do? I'd, I would probably accept the deal for for JT and Galladay. Probably. I don't fucking know. Tell me. I don't know. I, I literally don't know. I have no clue what I would do here. I'd probably try to add something else, but I wouldn't knock either side. I think this is a good deal. One more time, Galladay, JT in the 2022 third, or Terry McLaurin, J.K. Dobbins in the 2022 second. All right? It's Trey's show, baby. That's the show. Uh, appreciate y'all tapping in on Saturday. Appreciate y'all listening on In the Lab on Monday for those of y'all are checking it out on the podcast. Uh, make sure you go to FTN Fantasy, man. I got a whole new package over there uh you know a lot of my content has been exclusive to patreon but with the 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 merger and the partnership with ftn fantasy and bets tv there's a lot of good dope stuff coming but if you want all the tools you want the rankings you want all the shit that comes with ftn fantasy as well as access to me my discord patreon uh you know all of that stuff then go to ftn fantasy uh sign up for the ray g platinum package and uh, we can make that happen, man. And when you do that, use the promo code all gas at checkout to save you a little something, something at the end, man. But I appreciate y'all tapping in. I appreciate the thumbs up, the comments, everybody that engages below, whether you like my analysis or hate it. Uh, truly grateful and appreciative uh, for you all, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all are dope, and we're gonna keep the show rolling. So appreciate y'all. Have a good weekend. Have a good week, and uh, we'll tap in later on with more content. I'm out of this thing. Peace. <laughs>